Hi, my name's Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and today we're gonna take a walk down memory lane and look at every single painted miniature that I own. What up, Mini Family? I talk a lot about retrospection on this channel and taking inspiration from where you've come from as a miniature painter and how you've improved. That's why I'm not a fan of stripping models, even old crusty ones. So today we're gonna do just that, starting with the largest category of models that I own, miniature war game models. My first ever painted miniatures were Lord of the Rings models. My mom was a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, so she pushed me in that direction when I first discovered Games Workshop in 2002, when I was 10 years old. There wasn't a particular army that I clung to. I was kind of just slapping paint on everything I could get my hands on. It was intoxicating at the time, and I was running on pure childhood painting charisma. The more I hung out at Games Workshop, the more the Warhammer 40k wall called to me, however. I got the strongest pull from Orcs. I had a pretty decently sized force, but my stay in the 40k universe didn't last very long. From there, I moved on to Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Fantasy, as it was often shortened, had a certain mythos about it. Of the three games that Games Workshop supported at the time, it was the most complicated. And to my 12-year-old brain, that meant I had to play it. Because even then, I was a tryhard, and I had to steep myself in complicated tactics. Storm of Chaos came out and I was all about the Middenheim army. They had a special rule called Crush the Weak, which allowed them to be more effective against units that had a low leadership value. How awesome is that? I sadly sold all of the special Middenheim models, the Seneschals, the Wolf Priest, Totojin Guard, and R. Ulrich himself. This is all I have left, some spearmen, halberdiers, and a single huntsman. I actually know the person who bought the army and some of them were repainted, but others still have my old paint job. I then moved on to vampire counts and this is kind of a sad story. The only shred of evidence I have left of that army is a single skeleton warrior shield. Not even a single picture was taken of that army. I had a sizable Strigoi themed vampire army that was mostly painted in my youthful idiocy. I sold them to my local game store about three to four years ago and they were redistributed from there. I want to take this opportunity to caution against people selling their old painted miniatures. Nostalgia often kind of gets a bad rap, but it's not always a terrible feeling to have. And in this case, it's really good to have something to show for your hobbies as a child. If you're considering selling your old painted miniatures, I would just flat out say don't do it. You will almost certainly regret doing it. I know I definitely regret selling my Strigoi army and my old Middenheim army. Side note, if you're in the Twin Cities area of Minnesota and you've seen kind of an old vampire count army floating around, painted in blues and grays with Strigoi characters, one of them being a converted ogre gorger with a bat wing in his arm, get in contact with me, please. From there, I moved on to Wood Elves. I was probably around 13 at the time when I started these guys. They had just got redone and got a bunch of awesome new sculpts. This is what the Wood Elves looked like when painted by 13 year old Scott. I was going for more of a sinister Swamp Elf vibe. Later in my 20s, I repainted a large portion of my Wood Elf army in a new scheme and still have many more that are unpainted. All in all, I have a pretty sizable Wood Elf army that is on the brink of extinction from Age of Sigmar in 2020. So part of me wants to paint them all and play one massive game before I can no longer use them. Wood Elves were the last fantasy army I invested in and the army that I love most, but they're not the last GW army. In my early 20s, I decided to get into Warhammer 40k again with some Dark Eldar. My army isn't that big yet and I also haven't really played a single game with them. I sold every single unpainted Dark Elder model I had, so the Cabal of the Withering Sun awaits in earnest for me to start investing more time into fresh reinforcements so they can raid the skies for the first time. Later in my gaming life, I discovered Guild Ball at Adepticon 2017. It was a super fun game and the Morticians called to me for obvious reasons. I have most of the guild painted and even some themed Mortician terrain and a ball painted. I still actively play this game and hopefully in the future you'll see a video of John and I playing. Now on to display miniatures. The first ever model I painted and put on a fancy base was Gaius Politis from the game Arena Rex. It was for a competition on the miniature painting subreddit. 
I remember this model was special because it was the first time that I really pushed myself harder than I've ever done. I took second place in the advanced category with this one. After that, I gave Crystal Brush a shot and in 2017 entered this piece, which I called Forgotten Paths. The story is that I wanted this to be a wood elf heading off to battle for the first time and she's lingering just a little while longer at home. I actually didn't research the categories very well and was put in with large scale miniatures and I was absolutely crushed. I didn't even make final cut this year, but honestly, I probably didn't deserve it. After Forgotten Pass, I painted Tally, a model that was part of a miniature painting duel between me and another friend, wherein we painted the same model and had the community on Reddit decide who did it best. He won by literally two to three votes out of hundreds. It was a super close one. The story behind Tally is that she's a hired gun. The marks on her scalp are the number of people that she's killed in her career. If you're noticing a trend here, it's that I love to develop stories for my miniatures because it helps decide the paint scheme so much. I would have never have thought to give her a tally tattoo on her scalp if it wasn't for this backstory. Next up is my entry for 2018 Adepticon, which was called Power Corrupts. This was the second bust I'd ever painted. Before her, I painted a Hellboy bust for my mom and gifted it for Christmas to her. I love this sculpt from Pedro Fernandez and I wanted it to ooze the idea of beauty tarnished by vice. This was my first real journey into the world of freehanding. All the cracks in the skin are painted on. This was the first time I made Final Cut judging, but I didn't place at Adepticon, but I was still really proud of that result because the bust category that year was absolutely stacked. That brings us to present day Adepticon 2019, where I entered my witch piece, which many of you know is called Homecoming. I again made Final Cut with this piece, but I didn't place, which was kind of bittersweet because 2019 was the last year for Crystal Brush. This piece was strange. The painting of the figure itself was mostly a rush job, and toward the end, I kind of hated it. It was the first time I ever worked from a concept art first, as opposed to starting with a model and developing a concept from there. Finally, that brings us to the last miscellaneous category. This category has some different miniatures in it, like board game minis from the other Seven Deadly Sins, a board game made by Cool Mini or not, or a few other models that I have painted for videos, or just models that I have painted for my own enjoyment. In the last two years, the only model that I have painted that wasn't for the express purpose of being in a video was this one. I plan to fix that at some point. There are many other miniatures that I've painted over the years that I've given away or were commissions. If you want to see my gallery of painted figures, I've linked it in the description. I hope you enjoyed this little history of miniatures. I know I really enjoyed it. It's amazing how much pride someone can take from old beaten up miniatures that were painted 15 years ago. It's really a testament to the human mind. If there's something to take away from this video, it's that there's value into holding on to stuff you put a lot of effort into. I'm not trying to tell you to be a hoarder, but if you spent hundreds of hours painting an army when you were 13, please keep it. My old Middenheim army looked awful, but I still loved them. Break out your old minis, take some pride in them, and if you don't have any old minis, now is the best time to start your history. That's going to do it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I know it's a little bit different than the regular stuff that I make, but I enjoyed making it probably for obvious reasons. If you like the channel and you want to support it, there are many ways that you can do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting project or talk about your old favorite fantasy races. Anything kind of goes in that server. There are other ways to support me, like buying merch, like this hat that says paint more minis, or other ways. They're all listed down in the description. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to paint more minis!